In the maxilla, as in the mandible, we're just going to set one premolar and two molars. So we're going to take the first premolar and set that in the wax. Get the level of the cusps approximately where we want them. Get the alignment of the tooth, means you're distally proper. And then try that on our articulator and make sure that we get those cusps coming in so that they hit the lingual fossa of the mandibular teeth. In this particular case, I'm having difficulty getting my lingual cusp where I want without having no overjet. So what I'm going to do is actually move the lower teeth. I'm going to soften them up a little bit and I'm going to move them in a little bit bodily toward the lingual surface so that it's easier for me to get my maxillary lingual cusp where I want. Okay, and that's looking good there. And you can also see that I've got some space between my maxillary buccal cusp there. I've removed wax from my maxillary first molar. I'm going to put that into place. And remember that as you get closer to the condylar inclination, um, you're going to put maybe a little bit of a curve so that the distal cuspus might be just a tiny bit higher than the other. That will help you maintain some context as you move toward the posterior. I'm going to put that back on and check that against the occlusion in my mandibular uh, molars there. Perhaps I'm a little bit uh, shy there on the distal cusp there, so I'm not going to put quite as much distal tilt on that. I'll put that back in place. And I'm going to move that out so that I have a little bit more uh, overjet. As you move it buckle, the lingual cusp becomes more prominent and you start to get more overjet. And remember, you don't want any contact right in these areas here. You want at least a millimeter of space between the maxillary and mandibular teeth. So that molar looks good. I'll take that off, soften the wax around there, and then I have one more molar to set. Before I place my second molar, just taking a look from the occlusal uh, aspect to make sure again I'm following around the arch, I don't see any of my posterior teeth either too far buccal or too far lingual uh, uh, palatal in comparison to the rest of the teeth. So I'm going to go ahead now and place uh, my second molar, get the occlusal plane approximately right, move it buccolingually, so it looks like it should be in approximately the same spot. And check again to make sure that I have enough buccal overjet and no buccal cusp contacting. If any place, I probably have a little bit too close a contact here, and I've got good overjet on both of my molars here. I've got the teeth basically where I want them. I'm just going to remove a little bit of excess wax. Again, I'm using a finger rest while I'm doing that. Then I can use um, any one of my spatulas to smooth and fill in the wax. Same on the palatal surface. Again, make sure that your spatulas are good and warm so you can really get that wax nice and molten and smooth it. You don't want rough areas or sharp areas or bulky, uh, big drips around the teeth. And again, a minimum of wax is, is probably better than trying to finish it off at this point. You may still find that you have some changes to make in tooth position. Try those in and things are looking good. When I look at my maxillary arch now, I'm quite happy with the way I've set this. If I'm looking over here at the other side, maybe I have a feeling that this tooth here, the second molar, the 2-7, may be a little bit too far buckle, and I may need to change that, either bringing the mandibular teeth in um, or 
um, maybe this is in the wrong position and just making that change there. But that's basically how we set up, uh, begin to set up the posterior teeth. You may have to make a few minor changes to the side that your technician has set. The next thing that we're going to do is take a look um, at uh, where those contacts are and make a few refinements of po tooth position before we start to adjust to make sure we can get the contacts we want throughout the arch.